Uh, hello everyone. Okay, this is the video I'm going to show the calculation of bending stress in beam. And this is, and this is the first example. And uh, this is an example problem from the textbook 11.11. Okay, he said there is a, is a beam subject to a distributing loaded. Okay, and he said he want, to, he want to determine the maximum bending stress on, on this beam. And uh, here is the core section, core section of this, of this beam. Okay, and uh, okay. So first of all, when it comes to calculate the beam, up, uh, I, I clicked the wrong one. Uh, this one. Uh, oh, where is the? Oh, where is the? Uh, where is our? Oh shit. Oh, it's kind of slow. Okay. Okay, so when it comes to calculate the uh, bending stress in beam, uh, okay, I write down the formulas for bending stress in beam. Okay, it's minus my over i. Okay. Okay, m is the moment of inertia. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. 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 No, m is a bending moment. Okay, m is the moment. Okay, and I is the moment of inertia, and Y is the distance between the point of your interest in to the neutral axis. Okay, so when it comes to calculate the bending stress, uh, bending stress in being the first problem is where is your neutral axis? Okay, where is your neutral axis? You need to find a neutral axis at the very beginning. But uh, in this problem, okay, it's very good. It already tell you where is the neutral where the neutral axis is. Okay, because because the cross section area is symmetric, so it's very easy to determine the neutral axis. Okay, okay. So in this problem, you don't have to you don't have to calculate the uh, where you don't have to determine the neutral where the neutral axis is. Okay, but uh, maybe in the next problem, for example, for next problem, I, oh why I can I. Okay, for 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 the next example problem, you have to determine you have to determine the neutral axis. Okay, before you do the calculation, and this problem is very good. You don't have to determine the neutral axis. Okay, okay. So we already have neutral axis. So okay, so he wanted to determine. Okay, he only want to want to determine the maximum bending stress in beam, and also draw a shear stress shear stress distribution over the cross section area, and also determine the stress at the point B. Okay, but uh, in this demonstration, I'm not going to uh, draw the, the stress uh, stress distribution. Okay, because it's very hard to draw this by only by hand. Okay, so all I want to all I want going to do is determine the maximum maximum shear stress uh, maximum bending stress or and the bending stress at point B. That's all I want, what I'm going to do. Okay, and for the maximum. For the maximum, for the maximum, okay, for the maximum bending stress, all you need to know, maybe you you need to know, okay, for because this is the same material uh, in in this in this in this beam, the, the cross section area is is uh, uh, cross section area is the same, so I is fixed, okay, I is fixed a fixed value, okay, so you want to determine a maximum, if you want to determine a maximum, okay. In this problem, because uh, maybe I should draw a little discussion. Okay, okay, because of, well, if you want to, first of all, you want to determine of the maximum. Okay, so and I this is fixed. Okay, so okay, we don't have to consider that. Okay, only only thing left we need to know is do we have the maximum moment and do we have the maximum y. Okay, if these two will all have the maximum times together. Okay, well, and then. Okay, and then we we are good to find the maximum bending stress. Okay, and the maximum uh, is on the surface or on the bottom. Okay, because surface and bottom, you have the largest distance between, because the distance between the surface and bottom is the most uh, distant, the most distant distance to the neutral axis. So they are far farthest to the neutral axis. So it's, so the maximum maybe is on surface or on bottom because. As most, they are most away to the neutral axis, and then the other thing we do we have do we know where what's the maximum maximum moment in this beam? 
Okay, actually, for this problem, it gives you distributed loading. Okay, so normally you have to use so-called shear moment diagram to de determine the maximum maximum bending moment in this spin. Uh, yeah, but the shear moment diagram we'll talk about this later. So and right now, I, I'm not going to I'm not right going to okay uh draw uh draw the shear moment diagram and determine the maximum bending moment in this problem because that will make this the whole calculation process too long. Okay. So now I only just tell you, okay, okay, we already know. I just tell you the maximum bending maximum bending moment is already just the twenty 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 two point five kilonewton times meter. And it's at this is this and it's at this cross section here, and this is three. Okay, this is three. Okay, because there is is three. Okay, so I just tell you the maximum bending moment is twenty two point five kilonewton times a meter. Okay, so you don't have to determine this at the very beginning. Okay, by the drawing a, a shear moment diagram, that would make the cal calculation too long. So I just tell you, maximum bending moment is. 22.5 kilonewton times p. Okay, so we know this when we know that this maximum moment, and maybe you might also know the maximum of y, okay, because the bottom of the surface. Okay, and then the next thing is okay, so the only thing we need to calculate is the moment, uh, uh, moment of inertia, okay, moment of inertia. And the moment of inertia, okay, so how to calculate the moment of inertia of this cross section area? Okay, so this cross section we, we already know that it's it's this shape, okay, this shape uh is what they maybe call Y flange, okay, Y flange shape. Okay, so and we just use his uh, cut fashion, or maybe we have to redraw this, okay, and we we draw well, we if we want to determine the uh, moment of inertia in a complex area. So you need to divide it, your area into simple shape. And we divide it in this fashion. Okay, maybe I need a time to draw it. Wow. Wow. Okay, we determine in this way. Okay, we determine, yeah, just like the textbook did, we cut in this three section. And uh, very good is the neutral axis is here. Neutral axis is here. Okay, so let me draw the dimension. So dimension here is 20 and here is 150 and here, I think it's 20, right? Yeah, it's also 20. Okay, and here is 250 and it's millimeter. Okay. Okay. I think all the information. Okay. So what's the and I and I call this area. I call this area one, two, and here I call this three. And then after you divide your complete shape into, into a simple shape. Okay. Don't forget determine is centroid. Okay. For a rectangular centroid, is easy to determine. Okay. This centroid is here. Centroid is here, and centroid is here. Okay. Okay, so let's start to the calculation. Okay, so the moment of inertia of this cross section area, okay, actually it just add up the moment of inertia and these three moment of inertia of these three area. Okay, and actually I one is equal to I two. Okay. Okay, so let's calculate I one. Okay. And uh, we, first, you need to know the, the neutral axis right now is not passing through the centroid of area one. The neutral axis now is not passing through the centroid of area one. So, so you have to use a parallel x theorem to calculate the moment of inertia of area one. Okay, so so it's one over twelve and times b times h cubic. Because right now neutral axis is horizontal, so here is your B, okay, and here is your H, and B H cubic, so B is 250 times 10 to the power minus 3 and times H cubic, H is 20 point, uh, 20 millimeter and uh, cubic. And don't forget your parallel axis theorem here to plus the call AD square, AD, uh, a d square. Maybe I just calculate here. And plus a d square. A d square. 
a is the area of area one okay way d square is b times h so it's b times the h b times h and d square d is a distance between the centroid or interest to the neutral axis so the centroid what interesting now is here and the distance between the centroid to the neutral axis so what's the distance here okay because this is centroid so this must be 10 so it's 160 okay got it so it's 160 times 10 to the power minus 3 square okay so and you add these two together um yeah i th i think it may be you use your calculator so be careful you use your calculator I think oh, I just write down the answer for you. So it's equal to 1.67 times 10 to the power minus 7 plus 1.28 times 10 to the power minus 4. Mm -hmm. uh, AD square is dominant. Okay, it's dominant. AD square value is dominant. So I think it's very close to 1.28. Okay, 1.281761010 10 times 10 to the power minus 4. It's a unit m to the power 4. Okay, that's I1 and I2. And next next thing is what is our I3? I3 is very good, to, easy to calculate because right now your neutral axis is, is passing through the centroid of area three. The neutral axis now is passing through the air, uh, passing through the centroid of area three. So you just use the formula directly. You don't have to use a parallel x theorem. So it's one over 12 ph cubic and now the neutral axis x is a horizontal so now this is your uh, for, okay so i maybe i need to delete this uh, the, 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 the. and now for area three here uh here is your v and here is your h bh cubic so it's 20 times 10 to the power minus 3 millimeter and h cubic h is this is 150 be careful it's 150 and this is also 150 so it's 300 10 to the power minus 3 and cubic and you don't have to add 80 square because right now the neutral axis is passing through its centroid so you don't have to add 80 square so what's the value of this yeah don't forget use your calculator uh, let me see what's the value okay i think is 4.5 times 10 to the power minus 5 and your unit is m to the power 4. okay so we we have the i1 and i2 and i3 so just add them together so i equal to i1 plus i2 plus i3 uh, right now i don't have space so maybe i just clear here okay I just uh, erase this detail so if you want to take a note please rewind so here is i1 i2 here is i1 equal to i2 okay so two times i1 plus i3 so what's the final value is uh let's see uh it's two times uh, two times 1.2 one six seven and time ten to the power minus five oh sorry time one point two eight one six seven mm -hmm. minus four mm, and plus four point five times ten to the power minus five okay so i think the value is 3.01334 times 10 to the power as n uh, m4 m4 ah okay it's m4 mm -hmm. m4 okay so so if we have i okay a moment of inertia so right now we can discuss what's the maximum shear stress in this cross section uh, in this beam okay so let's put everything together to put everything in there so it's 3.01334 10 to, 10 to the power minus 4 yeah yeah that's good so okay what's the maximum shear stress world we already know it's 22 uh 22.5 kilo newton times meter so there's negative sign here so 24 uh, the 20 22.5 and times k don't forget the k k take k is 10 to the power of 3 
And uh, what's the y? Okay, y we can use the maximum with the top or bottom because top and bottom they are the top top and bottom they have the same distance away from the neutral axis. So we can choose no matter you choose top or bottom, that doesn't change the change the value. So we will choose the top. The top is one hundred and seventy millimeter away from the neutral axis. Okay, don't forget it. Is it this okay? So 170 millimeter away from the surface, uh, but away away from the uh, neutral axis. So let us determine the value. Uh, okay, uh, value is um 20 and uh, divided by 3.1334. Okay, so it's a minus here is one two six nine point three five five six and times to the power four. Okay, and let's do some uh, so it's equal to minus twenty two one point point six nine mega pascal. Okay, ten to ten to divided by two. Okay, so so the maximum is twelve point six nine megapascal. I think that's yeah, that's the answer. The maximum is here. Maximum here. Okay, okay, that's maximum. So we have negative value here, negative value. That just means it's compression. Okay, that means just means compression. But we 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 just want to know its maximum value. So it's, we don't care its compression or, or its its tensile. Okay, and so this is the maximum bending stress in this beam. And he also want to also determine at least the same cross section here. What's the the stress at stress at point B? Okay, so stress at point B here, and in the previous line we already told you. Okay, the the bending stress is linear. It's linear with it's linear. Okay, bending stress. Yeah. Okay, we uh, we just here. Bending stress has a linear relationship between the distance. Uh, a linear relationship with with the y and y is a, is a distance. A point of interest. The distance between the point of your interest and to the neutral axis. Okay, so we know at the top, at the top, okay, y max is equal to 170 millimeter. And the point of interest in, we are interested in here now is here, B is 150 millimeter. And it's a linear relationship, so we just put our value. The shear stress as B is actually, if you put your maximum value and times, times it's linear because it's linear relationship okay so what's the value it's just the uh, uh divided 70 and times 12.69 so it's 11.2 okay it's minus 11.2 and it's mega pascal because it's a linear relationship the shear stress and the and why the linear relationship and they subject to the same bending moment and the same moment inertia so you don't have to recalculate using this equation to recalculate again you have maximum value and time and use a linear relationship and you can determine the shear stress at this point b okay okay and then you will find if you have this c c is zero okay c is zero is because it's those linear relationship, okay, C is zero. Shear stress as C is equal to zero, okay. Okay, because C here, the distance between C and neutral axis is zero. So the shear, the bend, so it, because if the C is at the neutral axis, so there, there's no bend, it, it doesn't feel that any bending stress as you don't feel any bend, the beam doesn't feel, C, the C point doesn't feel any bending stress because it's on the neutral axis. Neutral axis doesn't feel any bending. Okay. Okay. So that's a problem for this problem. Okay. So if you want to know what the the the, stress, the bending stress distribution, what bending stress distribution looks like, okay. There's a next slide here. Okay. You can see it. Okay. I provide this picture for you. This is just bending stress distribution looks like. 
okay if you want to i just for your reference but in this problem i just want to know how to calculate bending stress okay so i just start video here i'll see you in another video okay bye bye mm.